Well, thank you very much to Nikki, to Jordan, and everyone here at the uh, Metaphysical Library. Um, I mean, what a, a great community service, having all kinds of talks here every, every Tuesday evening from learning about uh, metaphysical topics to how to be uh, you know, more in touch with your higher nature to just sort of wild fun stuff like where we're going tonight, like <laughs> Ashland's his, Ashland Halloween history stories. Um, and I have some special guests here with me I will introduce uh, in, uh, for who will be talking the last part of the uh, talk. It's not, it's not just going to be me, but I will um, go ahead and start out. Um, and I like to take people time traveling. That's what I do on my, uh, my history tours, my history talks. And so we're going to do some, some uh, time traveling tonight. This is our machine right here. <laughs> Isn't that part of metaphysics is being able to? OK. <laughs> so this is our time travel machine here. Um, and um, we are, so this is a beautiful autumn harvest themed um, front porch that I took a photo of a couple, few years ago. This is not what we're going to be talking about tonight, <laughs> however. <laughs> we're going more like this. <laughs> so um, I have uh, a bunch of photos from the last year's Halloween parade and some from 2009 Halloween parade I want to share with you here in the beginning and then we'll go back to the 1890s after that and then work our way back to the present day and the Moore family um, and this was this these these people really amazed me partly because that uh, carriage that the uh, bride is in doesn't don't the guys here are attracted to this uh, <laughs> beautiful bride. Um, the, the carriage that she's in is made of steel, solid steel, and it rolled down the parade route with somebody pulling it with her, her in it during the parade last year. Um, so, uh, and talk about time travel. <laughs> We've got... The Flintstones were here in 2009. Uh, I love this one. You dressed up in a Harry Potter costume, you said. Well, there's, there's Harry himself with, with his family last year. Uh, and then the, uh, I thought the guy on the right was very clever. You see what his sign says? <laughs> Uh, so I, I, got, I got to Ashland, um, I moved here in 1991, but actually my first Halloween here was in 1990. I think that was the, la the last Halloween where all of downtown was blocked off for the evening. You know, now it's just blocked off for the children's parade for several hours. Um, and. Uh, Here's a couple more real interesting ones from last year. Who knows the Dark Crystal movie? Oh, yeah. oh okay. See, I didn't know about it, but that, that apparently is one of the real land riders that came from the Dark Crystal movie. I mean, real as in quote, quote unquote real. And then some superhero, a superhero family on the right. Um, and I couldn't resist putting the kids in here. Their parents getting, getting them started early. Uh, and 
Officer Mullen even said, yeah, you can take my photo along with all these other characters. So I got, I couldn't resist. It's really scary. <laughs> Uh, so a, a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of history mixed in here. So I just I took a couple of sort of crowd photos of just to give get a sense of how many people were out on the street last year. But I this one on the right was in front of the Elks Lodge, and so then I looked in my my history photo collection, and this is a this photo is from the. Um, dedication of the Elks Lodge in 1910. Also with a crowd. Not, and they were in costumes. <laughs> Old-fashioned old 1910 costumes. Okay, okay, that's sort of corny. But, uh, and then here's another crowd photo. Um, the uh, Village Bakery building is on the left. You can see the Ashland Springs Hotel uh, in the background and then Again, a historical photo, uh, 1950s. This is the same building. The White it was the White House Grocery, where Village Bakery is now. Um, and and there's um, the Ashland Springs Hotel, which in the 1950s was still the Lithia Springs Hotel. Um, okay, so. Um, I'm going to tell you some story. I'm going to start out with some 1890s stories in our time machine. Um, and I thought it might be helpful to give you a little bit of a visual sense of Ashland at what Ashland was like at that time. There were, um, there were about 1,800 people living in Ashland in 1890. This is what the plaza looked like in 18, about 1885. And um, at the far end of the plaza, the Ashland Flour Mill, that's where the entrance to Lithia Park is now. The, the lawn and the Lithia Park sign right, right at the end of the plaza. Um, on the right-hand side, those two, for the first two buildings, aren't there anymore. But do you recognize the... The, the old lodge? It's, it's the I-O-O-F building, the brick building. And who knows what IOOF stands for? International Order of Odd Fellows. Odd Fellows, yes, the Odd Fellows building. Okay. Um, and this is just to give you a sense of the size of Ashland. So this is 1891 or 1892, looking from up in the hills. The plaza um, right here. Uh, right here, downtown. And the reason I, want, I picked this photo is because you can really get a sense. So the train, had, the train station and train service had come to Ashland in 1887. So the railroad district started in 1888, basically. So, there is a, a, so there's the railroad district along the train track. But aside from the railroad district, the whole town was basically just three or four blocks in, in all directions from the center of town, the Ashland Plaza. Uh, and out past, past three or four blocks, farmland. Um, so that's, you know, that was the, the real small town. Um, okay, first, Ash, Ash, first Halloween story is from 1890. Um, and I'm quoting from the Ashland, who knows, who and who is the Ashland Tidings newspaper? It, it stopped publishing in 2021, I believe, so if you, if you are uh, a newcomer since then, you may not have known about it. We now have Ashland.News, which is an online newspaper, fortunately. But the Ashland Tidings started in 1876. That was a long run from 1876 to 2021. So I'm quoting mostly from that. Quote, Halloween night was celebrated in a more boisterous and roisterous way in Ashland last Friday night than ever before. 
Scarcely a movable gate in the town was left upon its hinges, <laughs> and signs and other movable objects were mixed up in the old-fashioned way, but there were no arrests. That was November 7, 1890s. Um, now I'm going to just mention, you know, just in terms of some interesting history, to do a little sidetrack, um, and talk about Elsie McCall, who passed away uh, at the age of 17, April 20, 1890. This is her, her funeral notice, uh, April the 21st, the day after she died. Um, and this was what the McCall house looked like. Did you people recognize that house? It still looks pretty much the same. That's on Oak Street. It's now a bed and breakfast, McCall House bed and breakfast. Um, but um, John and Lizzie McCall built that house in 1883. They had a blended family with four children, uh, including Elsie. Sadly, she, she died uh, very you know, young at age 17. Um, and her parents, a few months after she died, planted a southern magnolia tree in the front yard in her memory. This is what it looked like about 1900 when that magnolia was about 10 years old. And this is what it looks like today. Um, it's now 134 years old, which is very old for a magnolia, and but it's incredibly healthy and filled with blossoms in the, uh, through most of the spring and summer. And um, thank you, Nikki, for mentioning my haunted Ashland tour, because I was going to, I was going to mention that Elsie McCall is one of the spirits whom people still encounter at the McCall house. There are four different spirits there that I talk about uh, during my haunted Ashland tour, as well as in, in other, other places, uh, other buildings, ha homes, and offices, and Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Um, so, um, but let's go to 1899. So it's, again, uh, the local newspaper. And th for this one starts out with a poem in this article. Take your gates and nail them down. <laughs> See why they said that after, this is nine years later. Take your gates and nail them down, turn the bulldog loose. Boys will be a coming round, fur to play the deuce. Ain't no way to hold them down, policemen won't be seen. They've got a mortgage on the town, for this is Halloween. <laughs> So then they went on and said, gates were nailed down and wired on in Ashland Tuesday night, but it didn't seem to make much difference the next morning. Mm -hmm. There were the same number of gate signs, wagons, and other loose articles spirited to out-of-the-way places as of yore. <laughs> Very little destruction of property is reported, but there were several instances where barns were entered and wagons taken out and left on the highway in an inverted position. <laughs> Happy, good-natured, mischievous crowds of boys, and there were some girls too, moved up and down the streets until after midnight, soon after which the usual quietness reigned. That was November 2, 1899 newspaper. And here's another one from, from the, the same issue on November the 2. And this one has a little humor mixed in with it, but um, you, you can make up your own mind about whether it's humorous or not humorous. Uh, it's, the title is A Halloween Incident. There was one incident connected with Tuesday night's celebration of Halloween, which would probably go down in oblivion if it were not that the tidings now records it on the pages of history. <laughs> Sylvester Patterson of North Main Street, everybody know North Main Street leading out from the plaza. He had and still has a landing place leading from the street onto his premises. He rightly suspect, suspected that this boardwalk, meaning uh, a board 
uh, entrance placed uh, across a ditch in front of his property, from the, the ditch between the street and his property. Uh, so this boardwalk would be an objective point for the mischievous Halloween revelers. Secreting himself in a convenient place and armed with a long willowy horsewhip, <laughs> he awaited developments. Mm. Various bands of small boys came along, but Mr. Patterson's dissuader was effectual in protecting his property. <laughs> and no developments worthy of note occurred until late in the evening. Then it was that a young man and his best girl were beheld sauntering down the walk, apparently oblivious to all of the world except their nearness to each other. <laughs> Arriving at Mr. Patterson's walk, a thought seemed to strike the youthful swain that there was, here was a chance to disting distinguish himself before his inamorata his love. <laughs> and without hesitation, the walk was torn from its resting place and deposited in the ditch. But horror of horrors, there suddenly appeared on the scene a horrid man with a horsewhip. <laughs> Put that walk back, young man, thundered a voice, which sounded to the couple like a 13-inch gun. The young man demurred, but a couple of applications of the black snake to, a, to the place where it would do the most good <laughs> caused a change of mind. The walk was restored, but not to the satisfaction of Mr. Patterson. You'd better do it right, darling, cooed the turtle dove by, at the young man's side. The advice was followed, and the would-be hero walked off wiser, but not happier. <laughs> <laughs> that reporter was having fun, wasn't he? Yeah. Wasn't he or she? Okay. Um, so now we're going to go from 1899 to the 20th century, uh, 1915 to be exact. Uh, and the headline uh, for this story is Spooks Make Merry. Um, it's not a very spooky story, but the reason why I'm telling you this story is because it takes place in this building. Has anybody, have very many people here seen photos of the natatorium? Do you know what a natatorium is? Yeah. Natatorium is a swimming place, a place where people swim from the Latin, I guess. Is it Latin scholars? Is it from the Latin natatorium? Um, Klingon. Ashland Mineral Springs <laughs> Natatorium. Sulfur baths. So there, and this was located at the, if you can see it's a huge building. There were two, two large swimming pools, spring fed. The spring was right there, right, kind of right here. Um, this is at what is currently the corner of A Street and First Street. Those of you who shop, uh, Natural Foods, probably know that as the Ashland Food Co-op. Um, this is what was there from 1909 to 1919. That spring is still there under the parking lot of the Ashland Food Co-op, and they, they've just piped it to one of the local creeks. So yeah, it seems like a shame, but uh, um, so, um, and then, here at the corner of um, A Street and First Street, there, this is a bronze plaque in the sidewalk, uh, one of five bro historic bronze plaques that the uh, Public Arts Committee and the Historic Preservation Committee worked together to place in the railroad district. Um, okay, so here's the very brief story about the natatorium. Um, so there were swimming pools, but there was also, there was a, a large um, uh, it's like, a, oh, what's the word? Um, storage tank for the water and a maple dance floor over the storage tank. And there was a balcony that could seat several hundred people so that, you know, people could watch their kids swimming or or, or they could have a community events there, and this, this was a community event. 
The spook dance at the natatorium last night was well attended, both by dancers and spectators. While a great majority of those present were not in costumes, a goodly sprinkling of spooks and masqueraders lent a typical Halloween spirit to the occasion, while the lyric orchestra furnished delightful music. Okay, that's really exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was a Halloween party. Um, and this is pretty exciting. So, um, okay. 1944. Medford youths fined in Ashland for hurling eggs. <laughs> Throwing eggs from an automobile at pedestrians and other motorists, an overgrown Halloween prank, didn't stand the test in the police department or the city court Wednesday, and it resulted in fines for six youths who pleaded guilty to the charge. Um, and we're going to meet eggs again in the 1970s in a couple minutes. <laughs> now here's, here's kind of a, a sad story, but um, this was 1944 also. The most reprehensible offense, however, of the evening was the destruction of tombstones in the city cemetery near the junior high school by a gang of boys who were reported to have escaped in a Model T Ford. Um, and I just want to point out the high school, I mean the um, junior high school that's being discussed here was the old junior high school which was located between Siskiyou Boulevard and East, East Main Street where the Safeway store is now. Um, so that was the high school next to the Ashland Cemetery. So this, the uh, article goes on, Clarence Lane, who lives adjoining the cemetery, heard the noise in the cemetery and frightened the marauders away with a few shotgun blasts. <laughs> About 25 tombstones were damaged, some seriously. Many of the ornaments on the tombstones were broken off, and a few which were upset were cracked and broken. So yeah, I mean, Switching, you know, taking gates off is one thing, but messing around in the cemetery is, I don't know, that's, that's I don't call that a prank, but, uh, well, you know, it's interesting because I was talk to, uh, talking to one of my friends, hey, you know, do you have some, some memory, Halloween memories? And um, she had a different kind of cemetery protection memory. Uh, but without shotguns. Uh, so this was when she was in college uh, in the early 1970s. She, she said, um, a few of us in college, now SOU, were concerned that there might be damage done in the uh, Pioneer Cemetery on East Main Street on Halloween night, so we went down there in black clothing and we hid around the area. <laughs> when we heard someone coming into the graveyard, we would rise up out of the grave and move towards them. She said, screams ensued and much running away. And she ended out her story saying, well, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> But they also protected the tombstones, so if, if that's what any of those uh, people had in mind. Okay, but back to the egg throwing in the 1970s. Here's a story I found on Facebook told by, uh, or written by Jeff M. Uh, he said, in the mid-70s, I recall some massive mischief going on downtown on Halloween. Uh, egging was a thing. Things got out of control one year in regards to vehicles getting egged as they drove through town. East Main by the library in particular was an egg gauntlet. It was pretty hideous by all accounts. I'm not certain, but I believe this may have led to the idea of shutting the streets down in the downtown area and having a block party where authorities could keep a better eye on things. Um, and then also in the 1970s, sort of on this uh, similar theme, but not egg throwing, um, 
was, uh, anybody here used to drink Pyramid Juice from the Pyramid Juice Company? Okay. Um, we have a few. Well, Lenny, who owned the Pyramid Juice Company, wrote, wrote on this same Facebook group about a Halloween memory of his. He said, I had a Halloween party in the late 70s at the Pyramid Juice Company when it was on Fordyce Street. Uh, the Chepetto staff lined the long driveway with jack-o'-lanterns. There was a lot of juice for the kids. There was a haunted house, a live band, and a keg of beer for the adults. And then we all went downtown afterwards to see comedian and Shakespeare actor Harry Anderson. Whoa. Does that name ring a yeah. bell? Um, and, then, and then he ended saying the Ashland Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce got on board the following year and uh, started to organize a Halloween parade, so also in, in the 70s. Well, Harry Anderson actually, uh, I, I looked him up. Apparently he lived in Ashland from 1971 to 1976, though he traveled all over the country doing doing his, what he was doing was magic acts at that time. But he also acted in some Oregon Shakespeare Festival plays. And um, you know, he's famous for being the star of that TV show Night Court, uh, which aired from 1984 to 1992. Um, so the, the crowds kind of got a little bigger um, these are some, some 1980s um, photo, uh, photos that I found. There's a tooth, that's a toothbrush to go with the toothpaste. Um, the, uh, this, is, this is good for the Scrabble players. <laughs> The one that people mention the most, but I haven't seen a photo of it, is, is uh, the whole group dressed up like a deck of cards. Oh. Um, and you remember that? Yeah. I, if you ever find, a, no, find someone who has a photo of it, <laughs> I'd love to see one. Um, and then we have the electric outlets walking, walking down the street. <laughs> um, and <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I think, th is that three people in there? I, it's, uh, that's a wild one. That is yeah. a wild one. Um, so I think we'll, uh, I think we'll go here. So, you <laughs> so it, the, the, they pray the, at the, uh, Downtown Halloween, you know, it, the, it started being being uh, blocked off for for the for the evening, sometime in the late 70s or early 80s, and and it started to attract more. I mean, it was you know, a lot of creative people in Ashland still, and there were then, so it was it was a big party, and it started to attract people from from all over the valley and then from some other cities. And the, the low point in terms of out of control crowds seems like it was 1986. Um, and it was a Friday night. Halloween was a Friday night in 1986, which made it easy for, easier for people who were, say, driving from Portland and wanted to, wanted to find a, a big party. Um, so yeah, Main Street was closed from the library to Hellman Street from 4.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, oh, wow. back in 1986. The bars stayed open until 2.30 a.m. Wow. The uh, 1986, they even they had six food booths um, along Main Street so people could get food, which is you know, understandable. And they also had two live bands for the first time. Uh, Pyramid and the Firehouse Five. Um, so the Ashland Tidings, which was now the Daily Tidings, in November the 1st, 1986, describing the Halloween the day before, 
the headline read, Stabbing and Shooting Mar Festivities. So the police chief, Vic Lively, he estimated there were probably about 7,000, up to 7,000 people downtown that year. And uh, sadly, an, an Ashland man was stabbed in the stomach, some altercation in the Lithia Park area near the plaza. And then a couple hours later, what seems like a freak accident, um, somebody was shot in the foot in a bar. Um, and there were a couple shots in a bar, and one, one got somebody's foot. So they ended up at the hospital. You know, they had some, some cert. They were OK. But, uh, um, and then the other thing, on top of those you know, sort of shocking incidents for the, the small town that Ashland is, the police chief said that, uh, quote, groups of youths in their late teens and early 20s roamed the downtown area throwing bottles and clashing with each other. And it, they, the police weren't able to finally get rid of these roving, roving groups until about 3.30 a.m. Um, so there was a lot of you know, sort of rethinking Halloween in the, in the years after that. Um, and, uh, but to, to kind of wrap up my part, I'll end on a brighter note, which is that um, in 1985, the year before that, that was the first annual children's parade for Ashland Halloween. Um, in the first year, it started at 7 p.m. They changed the starting time the next year to 4.30 p.m. What time does it start now? 3.30. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm planning to be there. Um, and you know, it's a children's parade, but it's also a family event. And there's lots of creative adults who, you know, take part and and uh, are able to, you know, be as 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 we saw in some of those early photos, be creative and wild. Um, but I think the the difference from some of those 1980s. Um, years is that it's, I think it seems like it's back to being a community event of mostly locals. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I think that's, you know, that's what, that's what we want as a town. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and it's kind of cool that, I mean, the, the children's parade started in 1985 when, you know, it was a huge adult event and now it has become you know, really the children are the focus of the, of the community event. Um, so we've, we've uh, I think, done a good, you know, as a, as, a, as a community, as a town, done a good job there. So we, I want to introduce uh, our special guests. Um, this is a photo from last year of the Moore's house on East Main Street. And we have Karen Moore, Isa, and Mateo. Um, and they're going to take over and talk to you about some of their, uh, how they ended up doing what they're doing and share some of their stories with you. Yeah, so all your photos are in here. Uh, yes, this is our house. Uh, so we, we moved here from the Bay Area eight years ago, seven years ago, um, and we were always a Halloween family um, on a very small scale. Go to, click to the next, to click, click to the, the next scene? photo. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so that's Mateo there, and Isa in the middle, this is Antonio, he's not feeling well, but this gives you a sense of, we've, we've always been a Halloween family, um, but on a much smaller scale, and we were kind of cursed with always being the house that really never got trick-or-treaters, so we would dress up and decorate and then no one would show up and it was really sad every year we'd be super bummed full bags of candy and everything and then uh when we moved to ashland we got this great house but it's as if any of you know where our house is we're right next door to willow in school kind of across from uh the armory and it's like the last house before a lot you know a lot of farms so we were like oh, no one's good <laughs> no, no trick or treaters again. For the first few years, it, it for the first 
first couple years, yeah, but the first year we were here, we went to the parade, and it was our first Halloween parade, and when we, we all dressed up, and we went down there, and our eyes were like saucers, we were like, hold on, this is a whole town of people that are like us. <laughs> I think, I think we can kind of go for it now, like, this was our green light moment, so then from that point, every year we started to create a display and because we're right on the main street there um, we have like a sort of a, a little area out in front of our property that we just year after year got bigger and more <laughs> carried away um, this is actually that oh yeah oh there you go it's carried away um, <laughs> this is a little sneak peek of our haunted house this year so we do do um, in addition to our outdoor display we also do a haunted house on Halloween night um, then, so we welcome trick or treaters. It's a little scary. It's not, it's not little little ones, but we also had we put a cemetery uh, set up in our front yard for little ones to just trick or treat, so they don't have to go in the haunted house. Um, and yeah, we're a very creative family. All of the kids are artists. Some of you probably have seen Issa's work. Do you want to? About the oh yeah, um, on Ashland Microphone. High School. Microphone. Oh sorry, oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, on Ashland High School, on like the main street outside in the front of Ashland High School, I painted the mural for Aiden Ellison. Oh, um, oh. So that was like my big project. Um, but between my senior year, that's about when I did that. So yeah, um, yeah, we're all artists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like being involved in the Ashland community, and that was like a big Ashland community moment for me. Um, but yeah, and both of both of my boys are also artists, um, and so this every year kind of became a bigger and bigger creative outlet for us. And a lot of the decorations we make by hand or alter, like um, we'll buy things from stores, but we always like judge them up, like nothing. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> stays, nothing it's not just like store bought yeah. stuff that we just put out there. Everything's painted. Um, our zombies last year we made completely with like skeleton frames and stuff with masks and like it's a lot of really creative work that goes into just we plan everything out months in advance just designing the layout because mm -hmm. um, it started just as an outdoor display then we decided to add the pergola add a structure outside because you know how rainy and windy ashland is yeah Doesn't our exactly animatronics were falling over exactly. every year um then we started the haunted house that became too popular and now we also have walk through because we realized the haunted house was a little bit too scary for some of the little kids yeah. so now we also have just the graveyard to walk through and get candy so so for little kids that don't want to or adults that don't want to go in the haunted yeah <laughs> kids are braver than adults we've it's learned that <laughs> over the years many more adults would like peek in and go nope mm -hmm. never mind another one of our handmade zombies yeah, from awesome. last year we made him with a tomato cage his body's made out of a tomato yeah. cage <laughs> <laughs> part of the fun of it is figuring out how yeah. to make things we our zombies are still out there in the front now they were our main thing in the haunted house last year um uh, we try to do like different themes every year. We added to our outdoor display. We did an ancient Egypt display out there right now, um, and the haunted house is kind of like a witchy, swampy, spooky theme this year. <laughs> yeah. So, but you'll see like if you miss the haunted house, you'll see we have pirate section of our outdoor display, the clown section. All of those were our past haunted houses that we use. Oh, cool. yeah. The Egyptian. Do you have some yeah. of the Egyptian? Yeah. Um, I painted that sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. um, oh. It's a homage to Tutankhamun sarcophagus. It's a little bit different, though. This is my um, name in hieroglyphs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I write Karen in hieroglyphs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Anyway. <laughs> that chariot's home bill. Um, you know, it's a chariot from a, a garden cart. The skeleton is hand, hand painted. <laughs> so all of the, none of this you can buy at the store. <laughs> All of this is our own creation, which is like, it just shows our passion for it. Like, we're just that passionate. We kind of go a little crazy. Um, the coffin, everything's homemade. So, yeah, that's part of our Egyptian display. Um, here's some of the clowns, which our clown display gets bigger and bigger each year. Because um, clowns are just super popular. We have some, some interactive stuff on this display. You can uh, shoot a little guy with a little gun, he falls down, and you have um, cornhole. Cornhole hole in that one because we found that we've got so many trick-or-treaters that people actually line up down this part so we're like we have all of these decorations and stuff that you can like do while you're waiting in line <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. 
it's, I mean, how many, like almost 700, probably yeah. around 700 trick or treaters last year. Wow. So we went from years oh of my. no trick or treaters yeah. ever. <laughs> and being like, oh, our man. first year that our display took off, um, we had to run to the store in the middle of the night and get candy <laughs> because we didn't have any more candy. Yeah. And now we know to like stock up. And we always think it's enough. Yeah. We always have to get more <laughs> because, yeah. but yeah, I think like, I think that we always thought our house was in a bad location for trick-or-treaters being the last house, but we get that Willowind traffic, Ashton mm -hmm. High School traffic, Middle School traffic, and so like when we put up our countdown, um, yep. if you've seen it driving mm -hmm. by, the happy yeah. day, so Halloween yeah. countdown, I think that like lit a spark in people and like, they were like, they got excited and they were like, I mean, we're going to come here on Halloween night, which we didn't get the memo. So we were like, <laughs> <laughs> we were like oh my gosh, we have to get more candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Here's our pirate display. <laughs> we made that pirate ship, uh, the sails, everything, we made that. Um, we really love the pirate. <laughs> I was like super popular with the kids too, the pirate display, everything. That's like a... Uh, uh, Dollar store uh, hampers up there and make the cages for those. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of creative, yeah, creative use of things. Oh my god, that's one of our ghouls. Mm -hmm. um, Is that part of the haunted house? She's actually she's she's in the outside, graveyard. she's in the graveyard section now. She's been used. Some of our decorations are what. Oh, ten, 10 years old. old. Ten we years hold on to things wow. as long as we can. Yeah. Um, one of our main parts of this address display this year is an animatronic that we've had over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's going strong. She's so. part of the family now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, there she is! This oh. decoration we've had for 10 years and she just, kids love her, she talks, she moves. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's a kind of like a swamp witch that lures little children, so. Yeah, yeah. very dark, but yeah. <laughs> a little dark. Yeah, so we have a lot of moving, talking, and animatronics, which is part of why we built the structure and have the haunted house, so that they don't get all wet and windy. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. I uh, actually didn't used to work on the haunted house. I was very much... I, I used to like really love Christmas, so I wouldn't have <laughs> But uh, this year, I was like, I, I really want, I felt bad, and I wanted to help out, so I, I, I didn't help out as much as my brother usually does, but I yeah. helped out a little bit, and it was really fun. I'll, I'll probably do more next year. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to choose the theme next year. Do you want to tell him what it is? Uh, we're thinking aliens, yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Do you all dress up in costumes, all the whole family? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can follow our Instagram. It's mm -hmm. Halloween House Ashland, I believe. We have some pictures of our last year costume. Um, we have, we do multiple costumes because we actually scare act in the haunted house. So this year I'm being Batman, but Batman is along the swamp. So we also have like our swamp costumes for the haunted house. Um, Tara's being a, one of his original characters this year. You're doing like a swamp witch thing. Yeah. Sometimes we'll we'll do a costume for the parade. That's something that we want to be. But then when it comes to Halloween, but we night, always dress up. Dress up with the theme. Well, that's the probably house. been the way that we've been the most creative before we bumped big on decorations. Was our costumes? Our costumes were kind of stand out. <laughs> yeah. Love from. <laughs> it would be like the Halloween parade, and Mom made Mateo, who had a huge train phase, a full cardboard train oh, that was a great costume thing. to wear. So it's like, mm -hmm. once we got old enough to to decorate our houses, yes, yeah. 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 the main yeah. focal point. Yeah. So our costumes <laughs> are on the back right now, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What time is your round the house? It's 6 p.m. this year is when we open. So, yeah, we'll get back from the parade and get right to it. Yeah? Yeah. It's <laughs> until 10, probably. Or okay. yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. When do you start working on Halloween? <laughs> or do you ever stop? <laughs> we start planning the next year, November yeah. 1st, it's kind like of. We look, <laughs> little like, tip is, like, Halloween decorations go on sale after Halloween. Mm. So we look, we look for decorations, use sales, yard sales all year long. Um, we know the theme usually. Yeah. About a year in advance, and then when we really like get into August. August, yeah. We like to have the outdoor display done by October first, so that it's there for the whole month of October, and then we spend October working on the haunted house part. Yeah. yeah. What's the cover theme for the haunted house? 
It's free. We don't have oh, yeah. anybody. It's our... We're, it's our gift we're just to people come to see Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just thank you for indulging our bizarre kind Did of... You <laughs> Did you have to build sheds to store the stuff? No. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but ev everything is everywhere. So we have a lot of Halloween storage in our carport, but then we have an entire guest room where we store all the animatronics where no There's one would ever want to stay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, skeletons in our closet. <laughs> it's Halloween every day. <laughs> yeah. What is what is the height of those tallest skeletons? That those you are have? twelve feet tall. Yeah, the big, the two big twelve footers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I drive my Irvine's house every year. I, I love like the, the Santa hat that you guys have. Yeah. We did do a little something for Christmas. Yeah. We have a the skeletons, obviously. <laughs> Still our version. Do you find this has influenced your dream life? Living with all these oh, <laughs> nightmares. Just kidding. You know. No, I think it's, I think we're so creative. Like someone else could walk into our house and be like, "How do you live in this every day?" But we don't. It's just so normal. They're, they're good friends of ours. They all have names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you're all welcome. Hopefully, you'll come Halloween night and yeah. visit us. And uh, Which side of the house do we throw eggs at? <laughs> <laughs> His bedroom. His bedroom. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. That'd be an interesting little thing if you know, have put some targets up and if you knock them over and you get a prize. Yeah, that's I mean at this point the way it's growing, it's gonna be like a full amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> and we've you, never you had dump the any. witch. Yeah. Dump the witch. The wall you dump it. Oh no. How many people oh, are actually how many people are actually in your family? So there, well, I have four kids. Not my all your skeletons and all your Oh, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> it's like I don't even know. Two, two 12 footers, what? 16, 20, 17. Almost 20 of our, of our five foot skeletons. Yeah. And they all have names? Not the skeletons. Not the skeletons. <laughs> Some of them do. You yeah. have the, the OGs, we call them, are the two that sit on, on, our, <laughs> on our display with the countdown. Yeah. No, they both. They just sit them. up there and drink a beer all yeah. season long. <laughs> <laughs> like their work is, their job is light. Yeah. You know, they're just yeah. overseeing. Yeah. They can't handle too much more. <laughs> no. No. They're supervising. Yeah. <laughs> and we've never had. Ever once people ask us this all the time because we're on such a busy street. We have never had anything vandalized or stolen, oh, nice. um, yeah. and we just leave everything out all year. And the community's been so incredibly supportive. People actually like, give us those drop. They'll off. drop off their weird stuff for us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, a dog, an animatronic dog, got dropped off. We got this one box that was just wear. like mannequin legs and yes. baby parts. <laughs> 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 Yeah, mannequin, not real okay, baby parts. Right, cool. Not real baby parts. <laughs> yeah. like, I think we're the, people think of us when they're like, who on earth could we give this to? Oh, we have like an old OSF prop, dragon yes. head. We, yes. we use him time to time. He's pretty old, so sometimes we don't put him yeah. out. But. It's cool, though. But we've gotten so much support, and a lot of families are really um, just grateful that we, uh, we do the scary stuff and... I think like it's good. It's good for kids. I I think. I mean, I definitely think like even just good for kids to see. What stuff Peter was talking them. about about Halloween night life. I feel like yeah, social life and Halloween night life has definitely gone down. Like just in my lifetime, I don't see as much kids trick or treating and stuff. So like being a house where people like literally thank us, like thank you for having something to do for my kids for Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's like really rewarding. Yeah, yeah. 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 It feels good, especially after COVID. It feels yeah. good to have some somewhere kids can be like social. And after the fire, too, we had a lot of families thank us because they lost their decorations in the yeah. fire, and it, it kind of brought back Halloween spirit for them. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, just, it's very rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> but we and do. exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun, though. What did you ever think of having someone do a, a movie of you making it? Through and through mm. to the oh, the house. They could stop motion There's for the TED Talk. Oh, that would be uh, cool. So you, so you have a record. Yeah. Of, of from the beginning through to when it's completed. You know, that's a great idea. It's, uh, we really should film and document it more. I think we're just so like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, getting it all done is crazy. Mm -hmm. But we really should film and document yeah. more in the process. What we part of the Bay Area are you from? Uh, from the East Bay, Castro Valley. Oh. 
stay up there because I just wanted to, this this is my website um, where you can if you aren't already familiar with it there are more than 140 photo essays about Ashland neighborhoods Ashland history public art and neighborhood art articles about Halloween um, and photos uh, Three articles about the uh, BIPOC celebration mural that Isa painted. Um, and so I, I do deep dives in, into the topics. And I, right on the home page, um, this gentleman said he receives my newsletter, email newsletter I send out every Monday and Thursday with two or three photos. You can sign up for it on my, right on my home page with your email address. Um, <coughs> But we, but we also wanted to see if anyone wanted, has uh, e any other questions or uh, your own Halloween story that you would like to share. I have a question about the McCall house. Mm -hmm. You were saying that the daughter that, was, that died at age 17, that her spirit's still there. Mm -hmm. Are there stories of people actually seeing her? And, and do you know why she's still at the house? I she... cannot answer why she's still at the house, but, but yes, all four of the spirits at the McCall house people have seen as well as communicated with or felt. Communicated with the owners? With the spirits, with the spirits. The owners have communicated with no, the spirits. No, there are a variety of people. Visitors, guests, staff, guests, staff, yeah, wow. and yeah. Uh, who are the four? Yeah, the four. Good. Who are the four spirits? Come on, my haunted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does Ashton have any animal spirits haunting anywhere? Mm. Um, you know, one of. One of the spirits at the McCall house is an animal spirit. Oh my gosh! A small dog. A small dog. Um, that's the only Great one that question. I personally know about. I'll give you some more information about Ashland in the 80s for Halloween. It was incredible. Oh my god. How many people were here in the 80s? Right oh you. my god. I remember you. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Your face looks familiar. Anyways, I'll tell you more about the guy who got the stabbing. He was my boyfriend. And um, it was pretty amazing because Ashland took out big um, newspapers in Portland and San Francisco inviting people here to Ashland oh, wow. to experience Ashland and Ashland before that was just our community and yeah. it was fantasy yeah. and it was yeah we it was so amazing because the adults cr took on the characters mm -hmm. and and it was all so safe but that particular Halloween, that my was boyfriend was dressed as a druid, and mm -hmm. the guy who stabbed him was dressed as a Rambo, in in army fatigue, and they, and it was like, the druid was acting in his part, and the Rambo guy said, "Yeah, come on, bring it on, bring it on," and and he he was very drunk, and he stabbed him. The police went after my friend. His name was Ben Pope. And he took, they took him down thinking he was part of the skirmish. And the guy from Portland g took off. And, but Ben was, um, you know, he also used to get drunk, so the police thought he was the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, that's what kind of shut it all down, which was really, really sad. I heard about the guy who got shot in the toe. I don't know that story, but that story was. Like, it just got out of hand that yeah. year. Yeah. But it was so amazing <laughs> up until then. And, um, you know, every it was such an amazing place. It was. It was very, it was, very positive. <laughs> that was so the, positive. That was the only time it went downhill. Truly, yes. it was hilariously funny. The kids from the university yeah. flooded the streets. Mm -hmm. 
where you could go in any bar at any time exactly. if you were of age yeah. and just party with your friends. People were hanging out in the trees. Yeah. And leaning out it was buildings. so amazing. And then for those of you who remember Geppetto's Ge restaurants, yes. Yes. every year the highlight of yes. the whole gathering was the Geppetto's wontons, wontons. Yes. Yes. would walk down the street. Oh my yes. you know, and so it was wonderful. Yeah. And, and it was and a very, very precious time yes, in Ashland. It was. And everybody went downtown. Yes. Everybody. It was Young so, and yeah. it was so safe. But that those carts, I remember them coming down in the parade. The parade was amazing too. Coming down and then they shuffled themselves. <laughs> 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 wife so I have Aww. to tell one story that I shared with my son and he just cracks up because I was a runner and I was at, this is before I knew Peter in the 80s and I was a runner and we all would go to the a bunch of running events and get t-shirts and sweatshirts and this one year we did the Redwood Wild River Run so we all had these teal sweatshirts with the hoods on them and we decided a whole like 12 of us, we'd go downtown and we'd be these cool runners, right? But we put black masks across our faces, right? Little black masks and these hoods. And, then, and we were downtown and these kids came up to us and they went, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! <laughs> and, and so and some of us were going, what? Yeah. <laughs> So we were we were also photographed because we were the teenage mutant ninja. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> and yeah, and so I just want to say to, to this lovely family, thank you yeah. for bringing the joy back to Ashland for our community because your house has become phenomenally successful and wonderful for Halloween. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Starts at the Peerless Hotel. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You have to sign up in advance, correct? Yeah. Peter? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sign up, but you, you can talk. Talk to me. Talk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So during the pandemic, we were walking around and there was a, a house, I think it's on the corner of B and 3rd. It's like Victorian. The, the front door was is up a bunch of steps. They had put PVC pipe down to the sidewalk, so when the kids came up to the house, they would drop the candy in the PVC <laughs> pipe, and it would come down so the kids could get the candy. They didn't have to go up to the front door of the house. And that was pretty cool. And I should say, we drive to go to the YMCA every day, and I don't have to think about how long till Halloween. <laughs> I can just look at the garage yeah. roof and see the countdown. Because that, that countdown doesn't run, it doesn't switch back to 365 or something. No, 365. it's only two digits. So we oh, started okay. like 87 or something like that. <laughs> no, and my, yeah. my son Antonio, who's not here, is the one who goes out on the roof every, every, every night, late at night or early morning, and switches that number <laughs> by hand. Yeah, it's great to watch it <laughs> evolve over time. That's great. Yeah. Skeletons are out. They're counting down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.